Hey guys, Uncle Steph here. So, the CEO Sundar Sundar, excuse me, Pichai says Google to keep hiring engineers because. So, this is an article in the Times of India, in fact. So, I'm going to give you a summary here, and then we're going to discuss some of the broader implications. I'm going to give you something that you can use for your own career. Uh, whether you're a pro or a beginner. Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google Parent Alphabet, says that Google will continue expanding its engineering workforce through 2026, directly, directly countering widespread industry concerns about AI-driven job displacement. Speaking at the Bloomberg Tech Conference, if you don't know, Bloomberg's a pretty big deal, um, Pachai emphasized that artificial intelligence serves as an accelerator rather than a replacement for human talent, enabling the company to pursue greater opportunities in emerging technology sectors. So, he says, I expect we will grow from our current engineering base over the next year because it allows us to do more with the opportunity space, Pachai told Bloomberg. Uh, the commitment comes as major tech company competitors like Amazon, Microsoft, and Meta have trimmed thousands, are planning to cut thousands of more positions this year to fund massive AI investment, raising fears about technology replacement. So, okay, a couple of things about this. Number one, this was expected. If you look at videos months ago, I talked about this. IBM, for example, another big tech company, they uh, basically, uh, they were ahead of the game a couple of years ago. They shut down their traditional development business. They started selling it off. So the IBM stock went, Pew! so I bought in, because IBM was retooling their business and investing in AI and uh, quantum. So they're now coming out with all these AI-based tools. And IBM actually has a uh, track record of seeing into the future that way. So, that's what's happening now. We're seeing a lot of traditional jobs, well, a lot. It's 1, 3%, 4%. There's a minor part of their workforces. But anyway, they're seeing, they're firing, they're firing a bunch of people who are trained in the old stuff, and they're moving to the new stuff. That's why I keep telling people, if you're a beginner, learn your foundations, then learn Python and JavaScript, and jump into the AI space, agentic AI development is where the money is going to be at for developers. In fact, I'm reading article, other articles where they're saying that uh, they're hiring people whether or not they're comfortable using AI. So learn AI. So it's just a new type of development. So yeah, so the Google CEO has confirmed that. You've seen IBM a couple years ago, they fired a bunch of people. Now they're bringing in a bunch of more people. They've just released new AI-based tools that they're providing businesses. So that's all pretty much aligns with what I had expected. And if you watch my channel, you know I was talking about this in advance. So here's the other big one. Let me find it that's related to all this. It's something Apple did. Where is it here? Apple in 2025, just they put out a, uh, a paper. And the title of the paper is The Illusion of Thinking... The Illusion of Thinking, Understanding the Strengths and Limitations of Reasoning Models Via the Lens of Problem Complexity. So here's the piece. You can go look it up yourself. Essentially, summary uh, with TLDR is that Apple has found that the models, the thinking models, don't think. Uh, when they are measured against um, benchmarks that are established, they, they, I think they were theorizing that uh, the uh, researchers were accidentally giving the answers to the LLM. So that's why you see these little performance increases. So what they did is they presented these, uh, they're not LLMs, LR, LRMs, I think, learning uh, large learning models, something like that. Anyway, these new models that a OpenAI and Google have been pitching and promoting uh, when they put those new models, the thinking models, in uh, with new problems, they got like zero. They went pew, pew, zero. So, what does that tell us? Does that mean that AI is, AI is all a scam? No, it doesn't. It just means that it's like every other product, lots of uh, high expectations and exaggerations, perhaps. So, what this also means 
is what I have suspected, and like the Google guys are saying, is that AI, yes, it speeds up things big time. But when it comes down to coming up with new ideas and inventing and true hardcore reasoning, the AIs uh, fail so far. And I think it's a major problem. I was talking to a friend of mine, a guy who used to work for me years ago. He's got his PhD in AI. He did work at Meta in advanced AI research. And he was, I was showing him the Apple thing and a few other things related to all this. And he said, yes, exactly. The AIs are not really thinking. They are super large. I'll put this in a way that developers will understand. You got to think of AIs as very large associative arrays that are weighted. Very large weighted associative arrays. When I say weighted, meaning they're trying to evaluate within a, 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 an array of uh, variables, which one is more important than the other, right? Think of a giant associative array. That's what the AIs are. So these things are very useful because they can, they can get you to a lot of answers much more quickly than you would otherwise, that's for sure. No question about it. As I said, I mentioned I was speaking to a startup from Asia, I guess about a month ago now, and they were saying that they were able to develop apps, an app that they're taking, they've taken to market since they got it done in about two or three months, I forget now. It was about two or three months. And he was saying, without AI, it would have taken well over a year. So it just means hyper-productivity, as the Google CEO, CEO was saying. Anyway, I hope this is useful. Again, don't fear the AI, the AI. Don't fear it. Embrace it. Those who jump into it early, especially if you're a junior dev and you want to get a job, jump on this stuff. That's how you're going to get your foot in the door by being one of the few new developers who embrace this stuff, that will give you a much greater opportunity of getting a job than, say, being a React developer or something like that. Not dissing on React, it's just, you know, you want to use React with AI. That's all I'm saying. All right, I hope this is useful. I am Uncle Steph. You don't know me. I've been in the game since 1995, 30 years, developed big apps for uh, pharmaceuticals, developed my own apps. I got my own training software, my own SaaS called Studio Web. So I know the game. I know the game from a uh, coder's point of view, uh, from a hardcore, deep into the bowels of a code nerd. nerd. And, and I also know how to take products to market. I've seen the evolution of the industry. This is another one. Those who jump on the new tech bandwagon, you know, although you do have to have your base in the code, you have to understand the development uh, stack. Uh, those who jump into the AI, you're going to have a huge opportunity here for a little while now, for sure. And because of what Apple just discovered, the AIs are not actually thinking too much. Uh, that means job security for a while. Job security for a while. How long? I don't know. It's hard to say. Maybe it'll come up with some new invention and in two or three years. Who knows? And then uh, the AIs will rise up and kill us all. That's possible. I doubt it, though. I'm only joking. All right. We're good. Ciao.